You believe in Jesus? Are you out of your mind? You're not Jewish anymore. You are a traitor to your people. When I was about 10 or 11 years old, living in Chicago, uh, my father's parents, I was very close to them. They looked like two characters from the movie Fiddler on the Roof. And I would hang out at their house a lot, well, especially when my grandma was making a good bowl of kreplach soup. I said to my grandpa, Grandpa, I see that you have received from letters from your cousins in Romania. Would you someday like to go back and hang out with your cousins? And he said, no. I said, Grandpa, why? He said, Pogrom, the farmers who claim to be Christians uh, in a city called Barlad, Romania, came looking for Jewish people to do them harm. And my grandpa and his sister and mother had to hide in the wine cellar. It was the, the 70s, it was the John Travolta era. I was invited to go on the spring trip for the University of Illinois baseball team. It was very early on that I was called in to pitch in relief. After our game, my roommate asked me if I would go with him to hear Billy Graham speak that night. I'll take a rain check. Jewish kids from Chicago don't do this kind of thing. My senior year, my friend again told me a famous lady was going to come speak. I said, I'll tell you what, you tell me what this person has to say, I'll take a rain check. He said a lady named Cory Ten Boom and her family were hiding Jewish people in the walls of their home. They actually got caught by the Nazis and her whole family died, not only because of their Christian faith, but because of their love for Israel and the Jewish people. Something inside of me said, whatever the real deal is, this must be it. And so when I was getting ready to pitch in my last game against the University of Michigan State, my friend Neil, after going for a run in the morning, comes into our apartment and blows my mind. Neil was Jewish. He said, Siegs, I need to tell you something. After I read the Hebrew scriptures and a careful examination of what it said, I've come to the conclusion the Messiah has already come. I said, Neil, are you out of your mind? I said, you believe in Jesus? And I said, Neil, you're not Jewish anymore. He said, no, I'm a completed Jew, Jeff. He said, Jeff, if you read it for yourself, I believe you'll come to the same conclusions. What a dilemma. If God really had a son, I'm going to have to see in my book, not their book, I held that Tanakh up to heaven and I prayed a prayer to God. I said, God, can I have a burning bush experience like Moses? One of the things that happened was I came to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31 through 34. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will enact the new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh. This new covenant, this new agreement is for Jewish people. There's something to what my friend Neil said. New covenant, New Testament. My mind was blown. I just fell on my knees in front of my bed as I was reading these verses and I just prayed a simple prayer. I said, dear God, please enter my heart and please forgive me for the sins of my life. I said, Lord, I'm new at this. I don't know exactly how to do this. But I said, I've longed for that personal relationship. And I realize that Yeshua HaMashiach is my burning bush experience. I said, Dad, after a careful examination of the Hebrew scriptures, I've come to the conclusion that the promised Jewish Messiah has already been here. He said, son, you are a traitor to your people. You are no longer my son. What you have done in my eyes is worse than Adolf Hitler. Now this went on for 26 years until a day came when my younger brother decided to go to church and he gave his life to Yeshua. He said, could you do me a favor? Could you tell dad the decision I made? Now, in a 26-year time frame, my dad 
and I began to have a better relationship. And when I called my dad, I said, Dad, I need to tell you something. After a careful examination of the Hebrew scriptures, my younger brother has also made the same decision that I made many years ago. My dad then began to cry. I received the shock of my life. It was only the second time in my life I ever heard him cry. The first time was when he hung the phone up on me, when he told me I wasn't his son anymore. And he began not only to cry, but he began to speak in the he Hebrew language. He nanny God, he nanny, here I am, here I am. What would you have me to do? I said, Dad, do you want to give your life to Yeshua? He said, yes, I do. For the last two and a half years of his life, we were like best friends. And then the day came when my dad just went to heaven. On that day, when I announced to my father that I gave my life to Yeshua, and he said, you're not my son anymore, my life was turned upside down. But you see, God had a plan. And on that day, it may have seemed bleak, but the Lord saw the future.